I'm going to uh, show Cal is not going to be um, present. Uh, he's going to be around, but he's not going to be present because this video in particular has a significant um, impact on him, which he'll, he'll elaborate on after the video. But it, it, it's important that I show this video for you uh, who are viewing supporters for context and what we're about to talk about. And this, this is going to tie into um, just the attack that we have to deal with from civilians. Uh, so right now I'm going to start the clip, Kyle, um, and then after I show it, you have context already, and then we'll elaborate further on the impact of that that we have to deal with. So um, I'm setting myself up now so you know what's going on. I'll get, the, I'll get you the text. Um, and then, yeah, be you know make sure you have your phone and you're ready to get the text, but I'm about to share that right now, okay? Five seconds in, we see Ahmad for the first okay, time. So he appears to be running at a consistent pace. At nine seconds, we get the first look at the truck stopped in the road. The driver's side door is open. The man standing outside is Travis McMichael. He is armed with a shotgun. Standing in the back of the truck is Travis's father, Greg. He's armed with a handgun. Two things to notice here as the camera starts to move erratically. Watch Ahmad as he appears to realize what's in front of him. He decides to go around the truck on the right-hand side to avoid Travis. Now, watch it again and think about Roddy Bryan, who is shooting the video. He keeps driving towards the evolving situation and then listen. That sound raises the question, is Bryan cocking a handgun from inside the car? Bryan maintains he was unarmed. As we break down the next sequence frame by frame, we see Ahmad on the passenger side of the McMichaels pickup. In the next frame, we can only see Greg McMichael, who appears to be holding a phone in his ear with his left hand. We know his right hand is holding a pistol. Now we see that Travis McMichael has moved from the driver's side to the front of the truck with his shotgun, presumably to confront Ahmad. His right leg shows his knees are bent, his head is looking forward. In the next frame, we see Travis has now stepped back, and this is when we hear the first gunshot. The next frame clearly shows that Travis is being pushed back and Ahmad has his hands on the rifle. Watch as Ahmad releases his hands and hits Travis, first with his left hand, then with his right, as the struggle moves out of frame. Greg, meanwhile, now in the back of the pickup, puts his phone down and appears to ready his pistol. Then another shot. And we see smoke coming from the struggle. At 27 seconds into the video, Travis and Ahmad can be seen again struggling over the rifle. Watch right here. Ahmad pulls his right hand off to try to hit Travis. This gives way to the final shot. The final frame of the 36-second video shows father and son each holding a firearm standing in the street with Ahmad Arbery laying on the ground dying. All right. So, yeah, brother, um, this video that I showed... It was on court TV and it was, okay. it broke it down even more. So it's good that you didn't see it. Yeah. Okay. So, um, okay. So explain, uh, you know, share with, um, all right, let me press in. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, the reason why we wanted to bring that up is uh, to just let you know we had a lengthy conversation about the um, racism and attacks that we face as, as a culture of black people from law enforcement. Okay, so what you just saw now was a video clip of uh, civilians attacking unarmed black people as well um mm -hmm. so i mean again the purpose of this is to enlighten and form provide tangibles and action steps so it was hard for me to see this mm -hmm. um 
So just give you some indication on kind of what Kyle, why Kyle couldn't see it. And he's going to give you, it was hard for me to see it to the point where I'm detached to a degree because I didn't go through or be exposed to it at the length that Kyle has been. So now I leave the topic that I, I give the floor over to Kyle to explain and give uh, his side and uh, his perception on the impact of civilians uh, coming at us as well. So Kyle, it's, it's over to you. Yeah, I mean, de definitely, brother. And uh, family, you know, Kyle and I had to talk beforehand uh, in reference of showing the uh, showing the footage. <clears throat> and it definitely needs to be exposed for the purpose of pro not promoting, uh, but to uh, proliferate the inhumanity against black folks in this country. Uh, but personally, uh, I, I didn't watch it. Like I didn't watch it initially when it came on TV. Uh, I excuse myself, as you saw, I excuse myself for when he showed it uh, just now. Uh, and also in reference of the George Floyd, who just happened with the brother George Floyd, I haven't I haven't fully watched that tape as well, uh, because uh, for me, I don't a lot of times in our society, especially now, uh, people are, are big on this trauma porn. They call it trauma porn. And it's, it's called that because a lot of people are feeding themselves off of like these these horrific, violent acts and they're getting off on it. They're they're getting some type of excitement or rush of emotion from it. Whether, whether it be for literally be for pleasure or it be for just because they're psychic, they're just used to drama and they want they want they want something in their life to give them a, a, a jolt of, of of emotion. But for me, you know, I don't need to watch, you know, Ahmaud Arbery getting shot. I don't need to see George Floyd being uh, being pretty much strangled, choked to death by someone's knee being kneeled on. I don't need to see that because I protect my mind and my body with certain images I allow in and. To be real with you, I have a plethora of, of, of images already pre-2020, uh, pre-2018, pre-2000, pre-1990, pre-1980, 70, 60, 50, 40. I remember my parents, especially my mother, showing me images of, of men and women being lynched when I was 10. And she didn't show me in the sense of to scare me, but she showed me to see that this historically how they have treated us in this country, uh, there's a, there's a famous picture that always in my mind, and I think about it almost probably at least once a week. Uh, it's from 1919 in Marion, Indiana. Uh, these two brothers, uh, what well, these two men? I don't know if they were brothers, but they were friends or associates of some sort. Thomas Ship and Abram Smith, right? So these two guys, they were um, they were jailed on the suspicion of murder and rape with this woman. Now, Marion, Indiana, and people know that's the Midwest, it's not down South. It's 1919, so this is around the time of the Spanish flu we're talking about. That image is forever in my mind. Like the fact that to see them hanging from the trees and seeing white spectators get off on that, right? So this is a long history of these people being literally lynched on camera whether you want to call it lynch by rope, lynch by gun, lynch by knife, lynch by strangulation, it's still a lynching, right? So that those imageries, I don't need to compound that. I've seen it enough. I've seen enough black death in my lifetime. I've seen enough black tragedy and violence in my lifetime already. And I don't need to compound that with new black tragedy. It's like a layer cake, right? You haven't even gotten over the first layer before there's another tragedy. And then you got to absorb that. Then you haven't finished even absorbing that when there's another layer. How many layers do you need? How many layers do you need? And a lot of times, to be honest with you, some people watching it really to get off on it. Like a lot of people who are racist or have some type of heavy racism or white supremacist mindset, they get off on seeing those images. They play them over and over again like it's a joke. Right? Like, oh, this is, a, this is my entertainment for today. So in my personal, my mind and my psyche, I don't need to see that anymore. Right. And I don't need to see it all because I, it's already playing in my in my mind already. And the histor and the historical reference of our, our men, women and children being lynched, being shot, being stabbed, being strangled, being castrated. I've seen those images. And those images are forever in my mind. You can't you can't unforget that you can't unforget a black man being burned at the stake. 
with his body being charred. You can't forget that image once you see it. You can't unforget that. So I, I, I'm very careful on the images I see in reference of our people and in, and in humanity in general. And in humanity in general. And again, to remember those brothers, Thomas Ship and Abram Smith, who were lynched in 1919. Look it up uh, if you if you choose so. Uh, but but yeah, in reference of that, I know how damaged it can be on the psyche. And we're already dealing with a lot now. So I don't want to I don't want to keep going, but that's that's why I have to excuse myself. Thank you, Kyle. Yeah. Um, so as best we can, um, you've seen it, you've already seen the footage. Uh, uh I mean that's I mean we kind of went into length in regards to this is similar to you know the law enforcement thing, but I guess what I would add to the this topic of conversation is Oh, and real quick, Kade. Go, go. Real quick. That's yeah. where the term picnic comes from. Mm -hmm. If people don't know that. That's where the term picnic. When people say I go picnic, picnic comes from pick a nigga and hang them. Let's have let's have a festival. Let's have a celebration. I mean, these were gathering sessions for people. You know, people don't you, I don't know if your family all realize that, but these were gathering sessions for white racist men and women and their children to be like, oh, look at them hanging up there, you know, to cut off their toes, to cut off their private, cut off their uh, private parts. And to have them as souvenirs, this happened, this happened in human history, this happened and it's still happening. You know, it happened with Emmett Till, which we're about to go into, uh, Kai Day. It, it, it's happening. It's been happening. And lynchings were a form of method of um, of uh, intimidation because lynchings weren't happening during slavery. Why? And and not say, well, not say they weren't, but they weren't happening as much during slavery because they were already enslaved. They were already under the guise and the uh, in, in the um, in the force of the white racist slavery system. So there was no need to really lynch unless somebody really got out of line. Then they were, you know, like uh, like a uh, Nat Turner, Denmark Vesey, you know, those folks. Lynches didn't start to proliferate till after post-slavery, right? As an intimidation tactic, cross burnings as well. Like, so yeah, it goes deep. Thank you, Kyle. Uh, mm -hmm. What I guess uh, all of you who are watching um, also probably don't realize, especially those of the faith who are in church, I attended a Baptist church for uh, a, a good portion of my younger life, and every year, this is the, this is how insane this is, how dysfunctional this is, toxic, all those negative adjectives to describe uh, the history of this. Every summer, we would have a picnic. It would be a church picnic. And church picnic, if you think about it, because we didn't know our history, and I'm not going to go into the whole Christianity thing. We're not going to talk about that now. But we're actually celebrating mm. something that annually, annually, as a young person growing up, I didn't have no clue. I was excited about the picnics. Every summer, we're going to go to the picnic, we're going to go to the pool, what have you. But the theme of it I'm celebrating, which was to a large extent, the annihilation and killing and torture and dehumanization of my ancestors. As a community, as a group mm -hmm. and church. So it gives some kind of weight or some kind of context of just how deep this thing goes and just how much we don't know. So I just wanted to bring that into the conversation, Kyle, um, mm. of the word that you use, picnic. Um, as it relates to civilian atrocities, we live in a country that it's so, I don't know if the right word is prolific, mm -hmm. but to the point that white people don't even realize what they're doing or where it comes from or think mm -hmm. what they're doing is right because of what they've been indoctrinated with and programmed with growing up. Right. And with that, 
because it's you know we we ran it length with that, but with that ties into the Central Park situation that Cal was leading into before we transition. Cal, indeed, yes. So we know about the Central Park situation with the Central Park Five. That's that's on another that's on another scale. That was that was here in New York before I moved here and lived here. Um, but then you have a new case with the with the woman Amy Cooper. I think her name is. Uh, that is calling out, yeah, calling out and threatening the the uh, the, the black African American, huh? African American bird watcher. Yeah, African American bird watcher, right? And he's telling like, you know, hey, put your dog on the leash. And then she gets all like, you know, frazzled. Like, no, oh, you know, hold on, God. which which was that's a rule in that area of the park. You must yeah. have your dog on the leash. So he's that's not right. telling you to do something that is a law of the park. That's right. That is correct. And not threatening her, not, not shouting at her, you know, but he's, you know, he's being like, hey, you know, put your dog on a leash, you know, like that's the, like you said, that's the rule in this park in, in this area. And then she becomes frazzled and she's like, I'm calling, you know, I'm calling like, you know, you're threatening me. And then she starts changing her voice like, oh, my gosh. Like, you know, he goes to that high pitch octave. And all the while, which is kind of comedy in it, you know, she's strangling her dog at the same time, which is kind of hilarious to me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, the, the situation is not hilarious, but I mean, you're like, you're so worried about like calling on this fake call that you're strangling your dog at the same time. Like, that's that's just like a perfect comic moment if it wasn't for real, you know. But um, but yeah, but luckily the brother got out of it. Luckily, you know, he wasn't accosted by any uh, law enforcement or any police or anything like that, and he, you know, he was able to keep his life. But in reference of what I mentioned before with Thomas Ship and Abram Smith and uh, Emmett Till, you know, these were people, civilians that called call them out on something that they didn't do and they lost their lives on it. Mm-hmm. They lost their lives on it. Mm-hmm. You know, they lost their lives on just a hearsay from a white man or white woman mm-hmm. that he looked at me wrong mm-hmm. or he said something to me wrong or he so quote unquote maybe whistled at me mm-hmm. or you know, he touched me or, you know, uh, his his car is bigger than mine. Uh, his business is doing better than mine. Mm-hmm. He's walking. He's <laughs> running. He's talking. He's breathing. I mean, you know, it's like, come on, man. Come on. Like, but but see, luckily, thank goodness she lost what well, she lost her job. Mm hmm. Yep. She lost she lost the dog. She had. first of all, first of all, she was put on administrative leave first. Right, first, first. And then she first. lost her job. Then I she lost talk her about job. that. I want to talk yeah. about that. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. So, you know, where's the retribution? That is some retribution. But again, that's what if 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 that brother had not had his phone, just think of what might happen. We might be talking about two cases right now. And that's not as my students would say. That's not me dragging it. That's facts. That's facts, family. Thank you, Cal. One of the things I'm gonna I'm gonna add to that. Now, listen. Let me make this clear, um, as clear as I can. I understand. Uh, let me make this main clear, and it'll cascade down. Mm-hmm. I understand that white people were indoctrinated too. I understand right. that. When ba- when we're born babies, we don't see we don't we don't racism isn't a part of us. We're not that's not part of birth. Racism is not inherited. Mm-hmm. Social construct. Right, it's a social construct. Mean meaning as you're born, your parents teach you that. Your parents teach you the differences and teach you infer- their so-called terminology of inferiority complex. Correct. So not born racist is the point I'm trying to make. And let me yeah. calm down. Yeah. So I am acutely aware that people have been programmed to, and it's generational, parents upon parents. So they were grown, their parents told them that blacks, in this case, in this context, are inferior than you are. Yes. And then the system supports their parents' teaching. Okay, so it's a combination of things that take place. Oh, so yeah. I didn't have to say that there are white people who operate this way simply out of indoctrination and programming. That's all they know. That's all they knew. The system supports it. They see that, okay? 
So I just want to make sure that I put that out there that's clear so I'm not, people don't think I'm oblivious to what's going on. I'm trying to blame people. But at some point, you realize that what you were programmed to believe and think is not true. Proof of it is that clip that I showed with uh, Jane Elliott in the previous uh, interview thing that we did, mm -hmm. where she had a group of white people in an audience at a school and asked them if they would like to take the place of a black person living in this country. She asked them to stand if they would like to switch roles with a black person in this country. And not one of them stood up. Which tells me you know something's wrong and you wouldn't want to be treated that way and you know that's unfair. So now it comes to the point where you have to take accountability of what you've been taught by your parents, what's been ingrained in you and indoctrinated in you from your parents and society and the media and what's right compared to what's wrong. Correct. This is where I'm coming from. So I'm saying that, Cal, to say this, and I'm going to leave it over to you. Okay. My man, who was the bird watch, I forgot his name. You remember his name? I do not, I do not remember the brother's name, unfortunately. Sorry. Sorry. Yes. Sorry. yes. Sorry about that, fam. Yeah. We'll, we'll improve on that, but emotionally. But, but, you, you, know, but you know what's interesting about that, really brief? Talk the fact that he survived, and then we don't know his name. But the I one that, that, yeah, man, that's that's yeah. That's we'll, get we'll get his name. Yeah, we'll get his name. Yeah, man, we definitely will. Um, yeah, but, but but you but but I'm I'm saying that because the psychosis even on us. Yeah. To say that you don't take the time to you know the brother's name because he survived. Yeah. It's the one that we remember the name. The one that the one that die off. Dang. And that's the dynamic they have us following. We we following. We don't even know what we're following unless we stop and think about it. Like wow, I didn't take the time to learn the brother's name because he got out. He he survived. <laughs> it, man. It's, it's, it's that, the is game. So that is so true. Uh yeah. hold on, hold on. These are uh, brothers we need to be champion. These are brothers we need to be saying their yeah. name a lot more. Like, hey, champion, be like so and so. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, yes, like yes, 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 yeah. yes. You All know? right, so we'll we'll we keep we keep focus on, on the on the on the losses we're taking, but we also gotta focus on the people who are doing the work. Who are champion the work? Right. I think his name is Christian Cooper. Okay. I think his name is Christian Cooper. That's his name. Okay. You definitely got to put him in the chat. You well, know, hold, on, hold, the on. Chat. Oh, hold on. All right. No, I don't think it's the man who shot the video of the encounter. Christian Cooper is what they say. Okay. For NPR Tuesday evening. What the woman did. Yeah, it's so funny because her name is Amy Cooper. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, isn't it? From what I'm gathering, it could be wrong, but I believe his name is Christian Cooper. Okay. And her name is Amy Cooper. How interesting is that? Same last name. Um, but here's here's my point. Christian Cooper mm -hmm. is now asking that the people stop attacking Amy Cooper. Stop launching threats at her. I'm conflicted with that. My point is this. I don't wish death on anybody. Let me make that clear. I don't wish mm -hmm. death on anybody. Not my worst enemy. Mm -hmm. I don't wish death on anybody, so no. Mm -hmm. But I have a problem with what they call it, the savior syndrome complex or the indoctrination that we have, where mm -hmm. as the person being the victim, yeah, asking that others stop what they're doing. Yeah. For me, and this is just me, I'm not in that situation. Uh -huh. I'm saying for me, I would remove myself from that situation entirely and not comment and let the chips fall where they may. Mm -hmm. I would let the chips fall where they may. I would leave it with the Lord and let him handle it because it's happening that way for a reason. Mm -hmm. And the other part of it too is 
the realization on me that I, you know, if, one of the things that I would say to Christian Cooper if he was, you know, present, I can speak to him is, brother, yeah. you realize that if she got what she wanted, you could have been dead. You're wishing that people don't attack her or threaten her life, but she in essence threatened your life. Let me calm down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 see, and no, I'm glad, man, bro. I'm glad that you're showing emotion, man, because fam, you got to realize how deep this hurts, how deep this goes. We've been dealing with this since we was babies. You know what I'm saying? Like, this, and, and, and our folks been dealing with this since they was babies. And our other folks, our grandparents and great-grandparents been dealing since they was babies. So you got to feel like the hurt and the perspective that we're coming from. I, like, again, I wish harm on no one. And let, uh, again, but if they try to harm me, Without just reason, then I gotta defend myself, like Listen, anyone else, like any any sane person would do. Listen, but what Kai did, what, what to uh, to add on what Kai is saying, is facts. It's like, yo, we're you're in it. We're it kind of like it's in the in between zone. It's like, no, do we do we want harm on her? No, not not in the human. That shows the humanity of us. The fact that he got out of being harmed or, or possibly killed, but he still sees the humanity in this woman to say, look, family, I got out okay. Everything's cool now. She got some retribution. She lost her job. She lost her dog. Look, it's, it's settled with me. You know what I'm saying? Like I got out of okay. It's settled with me. You know what I'm saying? But that shows the humanity. Even in the, even in spite of him possibly being killed, he still shows his humanity. Still shines through. So here, 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 here. Thank you, Kyle. That's, Thank you. Yeah, man. That's what. Yeah, yo, man. I, hey, man. When I'm if, that, if that's not a greatness upon the people, I don't know what is. And again, it could be an Achilles heel for sure. If that that shows you uh, our our wherewithal, our awareness, and also our our just human ability, man, to just forgive folks. Um, yo, man, it, it, it's beyond. I, yeah, like here's where I'm coming from. Thank you, Cal. I appreciate. Yeah. That. Now let me add some emphasis to this. Mm -hmm. It would be, and I'm coming from it from this angle. It would yes. be different. To some degree, if she called the cops and said, you know, I'm feeling uncomfortable, whatever, whatever, like that. Mm -hmm. right? Because that would be the truth of the matter, right? Yeah. Saying right. like, that, I'm feeling uncomfortable. There's this black man here um, telling me what to do. I don't, I feel, I feel offended, whatever, like that, to the right. 911 officer, like that. We had changed. Where it changed, which is why I have every reason to believe that his life was threatened, was when mm -hmm. he changed the tonality of her voice to make it seem like she was being attacked yes. physically. Yes. Which would have resulted in cops coming to the rescue of a white woman whose life is in danger. Yes, sir. That's the difference. That's the key difference. Whereas his life would have been in danger based on some fabrication that she did and calling and bringing the police in. That's the problem. Yes. And that's the conversation that I would want to relay to Christian Cooper, Mr. Cooper in there saying, brother, do you realize, and this is where, this is where, this is where it gets thick. Mm -hmm. that what she did was intentional. Oh, very. It wasn't like she was just trying to get the cops over to her side and okay. play it out as if it would be something that's a disagreement verbally. Right. So her intention was for the cops to do harm because of the history that we've already experienced in this country as it relates to everything that had played out, especially in New York City in reference to how cops treat black men in this country. When she called the police with that intention in mind, she knew what they call that in court, with intent. Right, with intent. With intent. She called with intent to do harm to somebody who did not threaten her physically, who was right. just telling her what the rules of the park were. So because she didn't want to abide by the rules, not his rules, the parks rules, because she didn't want to abide by the rules. She thought it would be right to call the cops to put a man's life in danger. That's what I have a problem with. Oh, That's definitely. I have a problem with Christian not realizing 
brother, she had every intent of doing you bodily harm to the extent of losing your life, and you're telling others to not do that or threaten their life. Like I said, to that extent, I would say just stay out of it, bro. Mm -hmm. Just don't involve yourself in the conversation. Your part of it was what was filmed. That's it. You're done. Let the chips fall where they may. That's mm -hmm. what I want to add to that. Hmm. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, uh, yeah, man. It's just a lot of a lot of uh, real talk that needs to be had. And this is not this is not uh, Mobile, Alabama. You know, this ain't uh, right. This is the you know this ain't, this ain't Jackson, Mississippi. You know, this ain't you know Biloxi, Biloxi, Mississippi. This ain't Charleston, South Carolina. This is New York, New York. And right, huh? I said NYC. Right, NYC, right? The most diverse, supposedly, you know, you make it here, you make it anywhere, you know. Um, this is this is up north, family. Like, this is on the East Coast. Like, it's everywhere. I don't care if you're in South Dakota, Portland, Oregon, uh, Dallas, Texas, Los Angeles, California, Phoenix, Arizona, Salt Lake City, Utah. It, it, it goes down anywhere. It can go down anywhere. You know, and that's and that's what we're trying to say. Like this pervasive thing of racism, white supremacy, is a is a, is a is a is a is a true virus on the system. You know what I'm saying? It's a true virus, and um, you know if we don't deal with it, it's going like what's happening now. If we don't deal with it. Like this is what's going to occur. And again, going back to what we said earlier, most of these protesters are not black folk. Most of these protesters are are Caucasians mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. doing this stuff, whether for better or for worse. But it's them, mm -hmm. and we're in it true but it's mostly them protesting look at the look at the footage you know so uh, so yeah it's just it's it's just really uh it's it's really disheartening and really messed up I'm, that, uh, just keep yeah. it all real just keep it all the way real oh uh, uh, yeah you say uh, it's, it's been brought out that it's mostly what mostly white folks protesting granted yeah. that's fine but i have a question yeah if it was if it was someone in their family or mm -hmm. love it is, or if it was a if it was someone white that represented yeah. the culture, would they be reacting the same way? Meaning that like what? Like said it again. Would they like, be in protest, or would they be coming armed to the teeth with AK forty sevens and guns, demanding that the atrocity that take place, that it, the guy's life be taken already, that incarceration wasn't good enough. They be, I mean, they do. I mean, they do it on a small scale. I mean, if you see some footage of certain people, they do it on a small scale. But again, you have these militias too. You have, you know, people these weekend warriors they call them, like these militias that practice and, and do these like paramilitary training. You got to talk about that aspect too. You know, like, and these are like these these guys follow the constitution, meaning like if the if the government ever goes awry, these folks come in to be, help regulate the government and 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 their military forces. So, man, yo, it's levels to this, man. It really is. It really is like, gotcha. you know, people people thinking, you know, they're tipping through the tulips. I don't know what's going on, but, yo, it's real out here. And 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 again, I'm talking to the choir. I know I am. I'm talking to the choir. Y'all know it's real out here. What I'm saying is we have the tools. We have the tools and the wherewithal to do what we can and to resist. But if you're waiting for someone else to do that for you, you're going to be waiting. You're going to be waiting till your children's children's children. You know what I mean? Like that's. Mm -hmm. History, history is not here. History is here to serve us. History is not here for us to just spit facts. Like when I talked about Thomas Ship and Abram Smith, and when I talk about uh, Dr. Neely Fuller and Dr. Francis Cress Welsing, uh, when we talk about Angela Davis in the 60s and the 50s, it's not just to say it just because it sounds cool. It's to say as a reference to say, how can we use that information or what they went through in today's time where it can be effective? Mm. Like that's real. Very good. Thank you, Kyle. Thank you, sir. Um, yeah, Thank you, uh, man. So you got it. So tangibles and action steps mm -hmm. as it relates to well. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, recap it. Let's put it in yeah. there. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, format. So if you find yourself as an uh, African-American minority, um, but let's not say hold on. Let, let's not say minority too. <laughs> let, 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 yo, man, yo, no, 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 my, no minorities. No more, no more minority. No more minority. No more. I hate, that, I hate that term. Hate is a very strong word, family. But I hate that term, minority. I hate it. 
Why? Because we're not the minority, we're the majority. We're 88, at least 80% 80 of the world's population. When you say, if you want to use that term people of color now, people of color, 80% of the world's population, right? Now we're 12 to 13% here in the States, right? We're 12 to 13 in the States, roughly speaking. And the census is out this year, so that's going to change because majority of the nation is becoming uh, uh, ethnic, ethnic, right? So that whole term minority, dead that. Dead that. I'm not yeah, not, I, don't, I don't even function as that. It's a jewelry. All right. It, 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 so, it, it, if you can find, do your research. <laughs> All right. So that's that. Yeah, man. I'm sorry. And it's not you, man. But I just. Right. I term Because it's, it's, a, it's a misleading term. Gotcha. Yeah. So with us as a majority, as Thank you. I'll explain, Thank you. Uh, uh, where we're at risk of civilians. Um, uh, with our lives at risk, what are some tangibles or action steps? Personally, uh, for me, I always, myself, uh, mind my business. I go about my business. Um, well, speak I'll, on that Friday that mind, mind your business because that, that has a different connotation. <laughs> All we, right. We, you know, we've talked about this before. Right. So. Yeah. How can I? How, I'm trying. Let me give some. All right, civil, first of all, I don't give civilians. I try not to anyway. Give civilians a reason to attack me. So, for example, the example that we gave: if I'm in the park and I'm bird watching, and um, a, a woman like Amy Cooper is in there, uh, and she's and I, I'll give some. I'll give some real context to it. Stemming back when I was real young, uh, mm -hmm. and she's and she's um, she don't have her dog on the leash. I, I look at it from a variety of, well, two particular pros. Number one, I'm not the police. That's number one. Um, number one. And no citizens arrest, huh? No, nah, no, nah, I wouldn't do a citizen's <laughs> arrest because I know the climate. I know the climate. Right. Right. right? And I know the input, the privilege that white people feel they have. Mm -hmm. And I know where I stand. Mm hmm. So if I know where I stand in this context, nah, son, as long as I'm able to bird watch, right. that dog is not attacking me and right. trying to fight me, then bygones be bygones, live and let live. Mm -hmm. I ain't coming for you. Um, so to that extent, boom, I go about my business, you go about right. yours. I know you ain't coming to me to try and start up a conversation. I know you ain't trying to interact with me because I'm black and you white. And we in this park and there's not a lot of people there. So I know my life ain't in danger. Mm. You as a woman, because you're trying to attack me, I'm going to defend myself and knock you out. Simply put. So I know I'm good. I ain't got to worry about that. So you over there doing your thing. I'm over here doing mine. Mm. You're do like I said, I already gave that, that explanation clear. Right? So that's the first thing. One of the things I would do. All right. Let's say I'm I'm feeling myself that day. You know, I got I just did a conference or a lecture, and quote unquote, I kill I killed it. Right. Right. White people were like, oh, all that, whatever. I feel right. like I've seen some lives, and they are glad at the information that I share with them, and I feel like, oh, okay, there might be a change taking place in society where white people are coming around, and you know, it's you know, to live and let live, and you know, all the try whatever. Let's say I'm in there. And I decide to go to the park and do some bird watching. I'm warm, I'm feeling myself. I'm just, you know, I'm trying to give an example. Yeah, you're in a good mood. I'm yeah. in a good mood, what have you, right? And then this happens. I would probably say, excuse me, ma'am, you might want to put your dog on the leash or what have you. The rules said dog on the leash or whatever. Boom. Say that. She said, excuse me, or whatever her reaction was, right? Like that. Should she say, excuse me, or she don't want to do it, or push back? All right, no problem. I'm going about my business. That's it. That's all the exchange is going to take. I mm. recorded someplace else. At least I did my job as a citizen to alert the civilian that there are rules in this park that you should abide by. That's all mm. I can do. I can't force you to do it. I tell you, you don't do it. I'm on. I'm done. So that's one example of how I would, how can I say, like I said before, mind my business. Simple as that, as it deals with other civilians, especially. Now, here's one other thing I want to add to because I can give examples upon examples of it. But mm. when I was younger, I'll never forget. Uh, I, uh, we, I lived in the Bronx probably six years at this point. Um, and there was a new development that was built up. 
mm-hmm. and it had like nice landscapes, mm-hmm. trees and grass and benches, and it was fenced off, right? It was a right. new tenement built like six stories, the highest, but this was in the late 70s, okay, right? Um, the neighborhood was still populated with Italians, okay, Jewish and whites. Yep. So they moved into this new complex. Brand new, brother. Green grass. Woo! Rich green, too, right? Mm. The playground, new bars. Cra- we got in there, not through the front door, because if you didn't live in the building, you weren't allowed in there. Security was at its high. So we found a way to get in through the gate. Right. Or climb over, <laughs> climb over the gate. You know, you be young kids, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we get in there. So anyway, long story short, this white group of people, white family, they just moved in or what have you. There was this young girl, and I get, I, I assume she was a gymnast. And what she would do, there was like, um, you know, it was like it, the, 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 it was the it was the grounds where they had the you know benches and such yeah. little pavements here and like a path, like different pathways, like a maze or something like that. So she was doing a flip. She was going to do some gymnastics on this pavement. And to the left was the playground, you know, with the new swings and all of that. So I remember I was standing on top of the playground with some of my friends. And they were making this big thing about her. Like, ooh, you know, this whole big, ooh, you know, this whole thing with that. And she was scared. And she was intimidated. And this ties into the humanity that we have as a people, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm like, I say, you know, they're doing this go out for a few minutes. Right? So I I take it upon myself to shout out, don't worry about it. You can do it. Mm-hmm. That's what I said. Don't worry about it. Don't be scared. You can do it. Mm-hmm. We, we, we with you. We know you can do it. That kind of thing. Yeah. I didn't, no rules enforced. I ain't say you can't. Re- That's what I said. You know what her response to me was? What? Mind your business. I know I can do it. Who asked you anyway? <laughs> That's that New York feel right there for you, family. <laughs> now my friends are clowning me. <laughs> oh, he dissed you. I'm feeling bad because I was just trying to encourage her. At that, right, point, right. at that point, Kyle, I kid you not, at that age, I was like, I'm never going to say nothing to a white person <laughs> or tell you something again. Oh, man. I'm like, done. I'm through. Oh, that's that's what I mean by mind your business. So oh, tangible man. steps and action steps as it deals with civilians in this climate, particularly as it deals with other cultures, mind yeah. your business. If they're not attacking you, Nothing what they're doing is impeding your process or where you got to go. Mind your right. business. Go about your business. That's the main rule that I have right there. Now, here's the alternative. There. Now, if what they're doing is is attacking you or impeding you around your process, use technology. Record everything. Don't even say nothing. Put the recorder on first before you even respond. Yep. And then record every, every, every conversation. Because that way they can't say, well, I know I see the video, but who knows what took place before that? Right. Right. Who knows what led up to it? Maybe he he did something or said something that made her react that way or made the officers react that way. Soon as you see that tension that was going on, this directed at you and you know you in harm's way or it's impeding your face, put that record on. And then you commence your commencement speech and then your talk. That way they have a beginning, middle, and right. end. No confusion. No miss nothing. The right. first words that you spoke was when that recorder was on. Prior to that, you didn't say nothing else. Prior to that, this is what happened to me. This was a tech guy, and I put the recorder on before I responded or reacted in any way, shape, or form outside of starting the recording. Those are my mm-hmm. two steps in regards to civilian interaction and the, the life, the, the what we're dealing with in this society. Those, that's my tangibles and action steps. There you go. Oh. That's what's up. Yeah, family. Yeah, family. There's so many solutions out there. Um, and Kyrie just gave really good two one, good two good ones. Um, and then based on his experiences and based on our collective experiences, like I mean, again, you have you have a computer in your hand at all times. You have a camera in your hand at all times and use it to your ability. Now that doesn't say that stuff can't go bad quickly without whether you have it or you don't but it's less likely for it to go bad quickly or bad at all if you do have that phone in your hand. 
Now, I mean, that doesn't, again, there are certain rules of engagement when you're dealing with law enforcement or you're dealing with people who don't have your, people who are racist and don't have your best interests at heart, of course. Uh, but it, you know, it's on, it's on a, it's on a, a case by case scenario, you know, like if you're dealing with law enforcement and you're in a dark place, you know, you need to like, like say if you're driving for those who drive, mm. you know, make sure you get to a lit place before you stop your car. So that way at least you're in some type of light. Uh, if you're walking, like, you know, if you're a New Yorker or, you know, in a major city, you like, you walk a lot, you know, try to, try to be as calm as possible. You know, don't make sudden moves. Uh, you know, try to take down badge numbers, et cetera. If you mm. can, you know, because cop, I mean, police officers have told me in certain workshops that your rights, you knowing your rights is imperative, meaning it's very important. But if you're on a dark alley, I'm just saying, I'm just being hypothetical. If you're in a dark alley and there's nobody around, you talk about, I know my rights. Okay. <laughs> I mean, this is real. I mean, other, other law enforcement have told me this. Other law enforcement have told me this. Like, yeah, know your rights, but it's on a case by case scenario. You may have a cop that's highly volatile and he and he'll he'll jack you up just just on GP. But then you might have another also have another police officer that is cool like look you know what i'm saying like i'm you know like he may be a, a, a asshole but he but he's not trying to go there you know he's not trying to violently go there with you so yeah it's on a case-by-case -case scenario <laughs> i'm sorry Kyle. Yeah, all right man. all right you know yeah, your rights yeah. all right yes yeah, so yeah you, but you still got to know your rights base base and then you gotta uh, again it's not an either or thing it's both again we need people on a law level on a political level, we need people on a government level. We need people on a city level. We need people on a state level. We need people on a grassroots level. We need it all. Mm -hmm. We need it all. We basically so there's, there's no either or. People be like, oh man, we need people here. No, no, no. We need people. We need people all everywhere. Well, basically, Kyle, th just to piggyback real quick, let me uh, interrupt you. But yeah. I term it as we need the true representation of the society that we live in. This is it. What we see right now, no, that is the true representation. No, no, I mean, no, I mean, in all levels of society, government, like for example, uh, we're seeing it. We're seeing it right now in real time with with uh, with Agent Orange. You know what I'm saying? With President Cheeto, that's the, that he is who he is. We're seeing it in real time. This is who they are. No, no, no. What I, no, what, I, what I'm trying to explain in all levels of representation, meaning in government, we need to see. Like I'll use simple term like. Uh, these lectures or panel discussions, right? Yeah. In every panel discussion, obviously, as it relates to the topic broadly, we yeah. need to see, and I'm going to go in alphabetical order, we need to see African-American representative up there on the panel. Yeah. We need to see, um, uh, uh, now excuse me, Asian, American, African, yeah. right? Asian, black, however you want to interchange them. Uh, Middle Eastern, uh, Hispanic, uh, 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 and white, you know, the, the umbrella, the, the rainbow umbrella. We need to see every cultural representation in all aspects of society because that's the society that we live in. These panels where there's four whites and one black, I mean, you know, two white women, two white men, and one black woman, these little things like that, calling it for the sake of diversity. Excuse my language again, those who are listening. I don't mean to offend anyone, but that's bullshit. I'm tired of that. If it's a broad topic, right, it's related to a broad scenario, the society, we need to see every culture represented on that panel because that's the true representation of society that we live in. And right. that goes for government too. Politicians, right. whatever. We need to see every representation in that entity because that's the society in which we live in and that's the true reflection of what we live in. As opposed to what we see, that's what I meant by that, Cal. That's what right. I mean. Thank you, thank you for clarifying that, man. And and to and to add on to what Kyle is saying, he's absolutely right. And he's all and also what what he's saying, what what he's not saying, but saying is that if you're if you're waiting on your oppressor mm -hmm. to do these things for you, you're gonna be waiting, and your children's children's gonna be waiting. So what he's saying is, take the initiative, family, and do it on your own. If you're waiting on them, the government or your oppressor or your uh, a white supremacist who has who doesn't have your best interest at heart, nor your family, nor your nor your children at heart. What are you waiting on? Like, who does that? Who who waits on their enemy to do something for their benefit? Who does that? 
But but that but but that's because you don't know that they're your enemy. That's why you don't know that certain people that's actually against you. I, you know you know you know when we talk to our students as educators, right? You know they have these feelings that a lot of times, and I've and again I've been teaching for almost uh, for over a little over twenty years. There's some feelings that they have that they can't really pinpoint, but when they come across certain individuals as myself and Kaede and other educators, real true educators. And these are and these are and these are African American children and Latino children. When they say when it's like, man, I just feel like like they don't want me to win. And it's like that's not a that's not a ill feeling. That's facts. Mm. That's that that's not coming from out of the blue. That's coming from you're feeling something, even though you can't articulate it. You know it exists. And even if you can't even if you can't can't pinpoint it, you mm. know it's there. Mm. And it's up to us to say, oh yeah, there are definitely people waiting on your demise. They're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna dance a jig. They're gonna dance, d- make a song, and benefit and profit off of your pain and demise. That's just what it is. Real talk. And as soon as you recognize that, and as soon as you recognize who your who your true enemies are, is when the real work can really start, and you can really start to uh, strategize and really see what is out there and how you need to approach it, how you need to deal with it. But until you recognize who is truly against you and also promote unity and communication and solidarity with the, with, with your, with your community and with people who really care about your well being, then, then, then you're really not, you're doing yourself a disservice. You're doing yourself a disservice. Real talk. Real talk. Thank you, brother. Um, there you go. You have any more tangibles or uh, solutions or action steps uh, to uh, transition to the next and final talk? Nope. No, nope. no. Nope. I just, I uh, just say, hey, love yourself, be yourself, uh, love yourself enough to protect yourself and your family. Um, during these times, link up, squad up, crew up, and let's get free, as Dead Press said. Yeah. Don't say ready for this. You know I have patience.